Welcome to Socially Responsible Investing Podcast. This is episode four. I'm Bill Holiday with AIO Financial at AIOfinancial.com. In this episode, I'll be discussing Newberger Berman's Socially Responsive Mutual Fund, the ticker is NBSRX. I spoke with Mamundi Sabas, Subas, who is one of the co-managers of this fund. They would not let me put our conversation on the internet because of compliance issues. But I'll try my best to convey the meat of our conversation. So NBSRX, or Newberger Berman Socially Responsive Fund, Mutual Fund, comes up on the top of many mutual fund screens for large domestic companies, especially if you put in socially responsible or socially conscious investing as one of your factors. Uh, it is, it holds 32, or sorry, 37 different stocks, 11.7% uh, are foreign, uh, the remainder are domestic, it fits in the large cap growth category. It generally stay, has been staying with the S&P 500, uh, with the Russell 1000 growth. Uh, it exceeds it in the longer term. It's a little bit behind it in the one to five year. It's a little ahead of it in the shorter term. They give it a three stars, which is on average for return. It's a little bit below average on risk. Um, the expense ratio is 0.9, sorry, 0.89, and some of the top holdings, Danaher Corporation, Google, Altera, Texas Instruments, Progressive Corporation, BG Group, Unilever, uh, New Field Exploration, Procter Gamble, Scripps Network, yeah, they have three, 3 M here, Target, uh, Noble Energy. All right. So they, their screens. Let me talk to you about their screening process. And this is what they've told me is that they do, and this is publicly available, but they do some avoidance. They avoid tobacco, alcohol, gambling, nuclear power, and weapons. And then on the positive side, they are looking at best-in-class approach. So they will invest in oil, but they'll pick the best in that category. Uh, some, some of those other areas they don't completely avoid. They uh, look at environment, the track record and initiatives, workplace diversity, uh, work and family, uh, commun community charitable giving and partnerships, they did have their process. Target holdings, 15 to 25% annualized return potential over the three to five year investment horizon. Investment uh, premise for each stock links development of the business to the risk reward opportunity over time. Integrated SRI process evaluates business, financial, investment, environmental, workplace, and community criteria. So a little bit more detail on that screening. With the environment, they avoid history of non-compliance, they avoid industry laggards and nuclear power. On the positive with environment, they're looking for integrated environmental management, uh, reduced impact on biodiversity, decreased consumption, resource efficiency, increased climate change awareness, emissions, uh, reductions, innovative products, technology, minimized, uh, well, disclosure and minimized penalties, liabilities, contingencies, workplace, they look for diversity, gender equality, low turnover, increased productivity, employee health safety, internal labor standards, disclosure, and they avoid history of uh, human rights violations, discrimination suits, poor safety track record. For community, they look for charitable giving, community partnership, employee volunteer programs, strong, strong corporate image. They avoid uh, business interruptions, community controversy. On the product side, 
Well, similar. They avoid the hazardous and they're looking for innovative industry leader safety. All right. I think that's a summary of what they're doing. So, I asked them, how does this inclusion avoidance make a difference? Uh, it's not in initial public offering, and that's, I've seen that on the web, there's critics of the SRI screening because they say it's not an initial offering, so it's not raising capital for the company. How can screening make a difference? Well, you could just also Google uh, how does stock price affect a company. But uh, Mamundi was telling me that stock price is a matter of concern for a company, even if it's not the initial offering. The price of a share affects the company's ability to borrow. The share price is an indication of financial health, which is important for analysts and creditors. Management usually has a financial stake in a company. Many, time, many times the incentives are tied with how well that stock is doing. And a lot of the founding members may still be majority or large stakeholders in the company. Uh, so you are penalizing management through avoidance or uh, penalizing a company. Management is accountable to shareholders, so lower strike prices could mean, mean a change in management. I mean, that's how they're going to direct how successful they are to the shareholders who are the owners. So if, but through avoidance, a company's stock goes down, that could call, uh, make shareholders more interested in making some changes. Uh, publicly traded companies are also susceptible for takeover if their price drops too much. So it, it is a, a critical issue for lending, for uh, perform evaluation of performance. You are voting by avoiding or purchasing a shock, uh, stocks. <laughs> How does Newberger Berman participate in shareholder advocacy? So uh, Momundi was saying that they do shareholder resolutions, but a lot of times they're meeting with every company that they own. They own 37 different stock, different companies. And so they are meeting with each of those companies and addressing these SRI issues. And he is saying that uh, it goes hand in hand. Performance of a company, a strong company, and these ESG issues go hand in hand. It'll make it perform better if they are following, if they are not having worker problems, if they are environmental leaders connected with the communities, if their products are responsible. Uh, and there are other studies that have shown that. You get a happy workforce, you're going to be more productive, uh, board diversity makes sense. Uh, Companies, he's saying companies want to qualify. They want to be on their list of acceptable companies. Uh, it's good for their performance. It's good for their stock if more people are investing. Uh, so if they can qualify based on these criteria, these criteria, the, it makes it better for them as well. It's also good publicity if you're doing environmental impact, good environmental impacts, community giving. It encourages more investments. Uh, and ESG is a growing sector. So there's more and more investors looking at these environmental social governance issues. So it, again, it's good for moving that stock price up. Uh, what do they see as the future of SRI? Uh, have you seen it growing? It's easier. He's saying it's easier to be a manager now in SRI than it was five years ago because more companies are concerned about ESG for those very same reasons. It helps the company, bottom line. It also will help encourage more investors. It's positive publicity. Um, so more, there's more to pick from. ESG issues are, concerned, are considered by more and more companies. That's... We, we talked back and forth uh, about a few other issues there, but that's kind of a summary of where we are uh, with that discussion. 
I will still be in touch with them. We are looking at other mutual fund companies to bring on the show. I have spoken with Calvert and we'll see if they are allowed to. We were recorded their conversation. We'll see if they allow us to post it. Uh, it's a lot more helpful hearing it from them instead of hearing me uh, quote from our conversation. So know that we are not recommending this investment to everyone out there. It is not appropriate for everyone. Please read the prospectus. There are risks involved with this and any investment. Discuss it with your financial advisor. That's it for podcast episode number four. The next podcast we will be talking to, oh, we will be discussing some reports that came out. The U.S. SIF report, the Trends report, and Calvert Foundation Impact Report. Thank you for listening to Socially Responsible Investing Podcast. I'm Bill Holiday again with AIOfinancial.com. Let me know if you have any suggestions, what you think. If you have any comments, you can email me, bill at AIOfinancial.com, or call 520-325-0769. Thanks a lot.